Hey everyone, today I wanted to show you one of the most popular authentication solutions for Next.js applications today, and that's using Clerk. So Clerk is a comprehensive user management platform that allows us to set up authentication in a Next.js application. It's super easy to set up, but it's also flexible if we need to extend it to match our own branding and customize it in any way possible. However, it's going to give us the infrastructure to set up authentication in Next.js easily, as well as implement advanced features like social authentication. So we can easily, let's see how we can get started with using Clerk in a Next.js application. Additionally, I'm going to show you in this lecture how we can connect our Clerk authentication to a Nest.js backend. So if you have a Nest.js backend connected to your Next.js UI and server, you'll be able to authenticate with your Clerk authentication details to that Nest.js server. Let's take a look at all of this and more in this lecture. I'll see you there. So before we jump in, I would like to let you know that I'm currently building an entire course around modern Next.js using the app directory approach connected to a Nest.js backend with Prisma. So this is going to be a cutting edge application built around emulating a e-commerce store. I'm going to walk you through how to build a production grade Next.js application connected to a Nest.js backend. So if you'd like to get access to this course as it's being built and get access to all of this great content, I'll leave a link below where you can get access to it in case you really like to learn more about Next.js and Nest.js together. All right, so firstly, let's go ahead and just set up our Next.js app first. So I'm going to use npx create next app at latest to create our app. We'll go ahead and install if necessary. And I'll call this clerk nest.js. Feel free to call it whatever you'd like. I'll add the UI as well. I'll use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind. Just keep all of these defaults. So we're not going to use a source directory. And we're going to use the app router approach, which is the recommended way to build Next.js apps in 2024. We'll go ahead and use the default import alias and then let the installation go ahead and complete. All right, so we can CD into our application and I've also gone ahead and opened it up in a code editor. So we have our default Next.js application here out of the box. So this again, this is using the app directory approach. So we can see we have our root layout.tsx, which is rendering our HTML and body tag and all the children components. And then we have the page.tsx, which is rendering our current home page. So let's go ahead and start up this server by running npm run dev to start the Next.js development server. And now we should be able to access our application at localhost 3000. So you can see our default home page here. I'm just going to go ahead and remove everything, all this default JSX. So we start off with an empty slate and I'll return an empty JSX for now. So now we just have an empty black screen to get started. Let's go ahead and plug in clerk now to see how easy it is to get up and running with authentication. All right, so we're going to have to sign up for a clerk account. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start building for free and head to the sign up page where we can go ahead and sign up. You can feel free to sign up with GitHub or Google here or go ahead and create your own account. All right, so after signing up, we're going to be brought to a new application screen and then we can see the actual pre-built component, sign up component that Clerk is going to be providing for us. So by default, we have the email option here already selected where a user can sign up by email and we have the Google Auth sign in enabled as well. So we can also scroll down and see all of the other providers that Clerk offers us. So a bunch of different ways to authenticate with our application. I'll go ahead and enable GitHub as well and then provide an app name. I'll just call this demo for now and then click create application. All right, so now we can actually see this starter steps for our next JS application on the dashboard, which is actually going to be really useful to set up our integration. So let's go ahead and follow these exact steps. Firstly, we'll go ahead and install clerk for next JS in our UI. So let's go ahead and stop our server and go ahead and install it. I'll go ahead and start it back up and 
Now we also need to set environment variables. So these environment variables are going to be how we actually authenticate our application to Clerk's backend. Now we have two environment variables we're going to provide to our env.local. Now importantly, a env.local is an environment variable file in Next.js that will be automatically git ignored. So if we open up our git ignore, we can see it's already ignoring env.local files env.local is where we can provide environment variables that we don't want to commit to Git because they're sensitive and will still be read in by the Next.js application at runtime. So let's create a .env.local file where we can provide environment variables for Next.js and then we'll go ahead and copy these environment variables to this .env.local. Now importantly we can see that this environment variable is prefixed with next public. This means that this environment variable will be provided to our client side UI. Whereas this other environment variable, our clerk secret key, which is the actual password to authenticate to our clerk account. Well, this is very sensitive. We don't want to expose this. And thanks to using Next.js, this clerk secret key is only going to be loaded in on the Next.js server side, not provided to the client or to end users which could reveal this sensitive environment variable. So this is a really nice benefit to using Next.js. We keep these sensitive environment variables off of the client. So these will be automatically read in by the clerk SDK when we start our app up. Finally, we need to provide the clerk provider to our app. So the clerk provider is gonna provide authentication state to our Next.js app so that we can get access to the user and authentication state in client components later on. Let's go ahead and go back to our layout.tsx. So this is where we bootstrap our application and provide the root layout. It's also where we're gonna provide all of our React providers that are using the context API. So let's add the clerk provider from clerk slash next.js. So again, this is going to provide our application state globally to all of our components in this tree. So the last thing we need to do now is to actually enforce authentication. To do this in Next.js, we have the concept of middleware that can actually run on the Next.js server side before we render any client components back to the client. So to create middleware in Next.js on the server side, all we have to do is add a middleware dot ts at the root of the file and now we're going to define a function that is going to get executed on the next.js server before any requests are completed so let's go to step four in clerk and simply copy the middleware that they give us here so i'll simply paste in this off middleware and we can see here we're actually just exporting this wrapped function from the clerk next.js package and this is going to enforce middleware on all of our routes by default. We also have this config matcher, which is essentially a set of resources that we don't set this middleware to run for. Essentially just static Next.js assets that we don't need it on. Now, I also want to show you that this auth middleware takes an options object here where we can further configure it to our needs. So one example is a public routes property. So this is going to be an array of routes we can provide to our middleware where authentication will not be executed against. So for example, in your app, if you have a custom login screen, you of course don't want auth on that component to run. You can provide that route here. In our example, we'll apply authentication globally. So now at this point, if I try navigating back to our application, you can see we're immediately redirected to this signup component. So this is the exact signup component we saw when building our app originally. We have both of these authentication providers, or we can click sign up and sign up with any of these providers, or provide a simple email and password. So go ahead and finish authenticating with your application. All right, so I've gone ahead and completed authentication, and now I'm able to successfully access our application homepage, which is excellent. We have global authentication everywhere in our app, just as easy as this, thanks to this one line middleware. So let's discuss a bit what Clerk is actually doing underneath the hood. So in that middleware, you can see we were redirected to a Clerk hosted authentication provider. 
Now in production, that provider will be your own custom URL that you provision. So we're never going to be leaving our application, but in development mode, it's going to be on that hosted page we saw. Now that authentication provider is going to authenticate us based on our credentials, which are all stored in the clerk backend. And then it's going to redirect us back to our application. And importantly, what it does is it's going to set our authentication session using cookies. So if we go to our cookies tab right now and actually look at the cookie set for our domain, you'll actually see this session cookie that has been set and it looks very similar to a JWT. So we can verify this if we just copy this JWT and I'll go to JWT.io to decode the token. We can take a look at it here and see the decoded token. So this is just a JWT token that Clerk has provisioned for us because we're authenticated. And then since this cookie is set on our Next.js application domain, it's going to be provided for all requests we make to our Next.js server. So any routes we actually go to in our application will always include this session authentication cookie. And then this Clerk middleware, it'll find this session cookie, verify it, and make sure we're authenticated to access the page we're on. So this session cookie here is essentially how this authentication is all happening. And it's completely managed by Clerk for us, which makes this a very easy integration. Now, in addition to providing authentication, Clerk gives us a bunch of great UI components we can use to actually interact with the authentication state. Let's look at those next. So let's go to our homepage where I want to change the JSX we're currently returning and I want to return a div now and let's give this a class name of height screen flex item center justify center flex call gap five. So these are a bunch of tailwind classes we're applying to make our div essentially centered in the screen. So this is just going to make it look a bit better now that we can provide this clerk component of user button. So now if we go back to our app, we can actually see this user button in the middle of the screen, which is essentially the authenticated user's profile picture for their account. So I authenticated with Google. This is my Google accounts profile picture. If I click on it, you can actually see we have this little modal here where we can sign out and manage our account as well as the current authenticated user's details. So again, this is all coming thanks based off of our session cookie. Clerk knows which user is currently authenticated and it's displaying this modal thanks to that. So we can click sign out here and actually sign out of our application and be brought back to the sign in page. So I'll go ahead and sign back in. So we can sign in and sign out. And now if I click on this manage account, we have this really nice modal that pops up here and gives us all these details about our account as well as account management preferences. So we can go ahead here and manage our email addresses, our connected authentication providers, so we can connect multiple accounts. We have a security panel here to set a new password, as well as even view the devices that have been accessing our account recently. Finally, we can see here that we can even delete this account. So we have all of this information about our current authenticated user out of the box, thanks to Clerk. And there's very little we have to do to get all of this, which is very nice. Now, in addition to these pre-built components that Clerk offers us, so in addition to these pre-built components that Clerk offers us, it also provides us functions that we can call directly from our components to get authentication state. Now it offers two sets of these functions. One we can use directly in server components. So these are gonna be server actions that are only executed on the server side, but it also offers us client side functions that we can call on client components to get auth and user state. So let's take a quick look at both of these. I'll go ahead and firstly mark my home component as async. This is a server component, so we can use top level await here. Firstly, let's take a look at our auth details, which is essentially just going to be the decoded session token that is currently stored in the application that we've already seen. So let's go ahead and log this out firstly so we can just take a look at this. So again, this is a server component. 
So we'll have to take a look at these logs on the server side. So we can see this authentication object that we get back. This is going to include all of the claims that we already saw on the session token here. It also include the session ID and user ID. So this is going to be a really useful function call when we need access to this information without having to reach out to the clerk API. So let's go ahead and look at the next call, which is going to be the details about the current user. So we'll have const user equals to await current user from clerk slash next.js again. And let's go ahead and log out this user as well. So again, this is going to actually reach out to our clerk server to get information about our current authenticated user. So it'll include the session token to this call to authenticate it. And now if we look at our server logs, we can see we have the user's information here from our clerk server. So this is going to be all of the details that we have about this user, like their image, when they've last signed in, their email and phone number, any other account information that they have, will have access to on this user object. So let's go ahead and underneath our user button, we'll go ahead and output the user's first name and then the user dot last name. So now we can see my user's name directly underneath my profile. So now we've seen these functions on the server side. Let's take a look at how we can get authentication state on the client side. And again, thanks to this Clark provider we've already set up, this is going to be really easy to do. So let's go ahead and create a new route here that I'll just call user. And I'll create a page.ts6 in here so that we render this route. I'm also going to provide use client up top so that this is rendered as a client component explicitly. And then we'll export default function user. So this is just going to be a sample user page. And in here, let's go ahead and return empty JSX for now and make sure we can navigate to slash user. So we're on the user client component now. I want to get access to the user and authentication state again. Well, Clerk offers us custom hooks to do this. So let's get access to auth by calling use auth from clerk slash nest.js and go ahead and log this out first. So now that we're in a client component, we should expect to see these logs on the browser. So let's go ahead and check. Yep, we have this object now, which is the authentication state for this given JWT. Additionally, we have the user we can get access to from use user. So let's go ahead and log the user out. Refresh. And now we have the user's information underneath this user object. And I'll go ahead and output it now inside of our return. So I'll just have an H1 where I'll include, again, the user's first name here as well as the user.user.last name. So now we see our user's name in the top of the browser here. So now we see how we can get access to our auth state in both client and server components super easily thanks to Clerk's APIs. All right, so now the last bit I want to show you is how we can pass this authentication state to a custom Nest.js server or really any Node.js server that you're going to be utilizing. It's going to be a very similar process. So to get started, I'm going to use the Nest CLI to generate a new project and call this Clerk Nest.js backend now. And I'll use pnpm to set up my project. Now there's a couple of dependencies we want to install out of the box. So let's cd into our backend and install at clerk slash clerk SDK node. So this is going to be clerk's SDK for any Node.js backend. I also want to install cookie parser, which we're going to need to use on our backend to actually parse the incoming session cookie from clerk. Finally, go ahead and also install safe dev types for cookie parser. And then we can go ahead and start up our Nest.js server with pnpm start dev. Now you can see here that it's conflicting with the Next.js port we're already using. I'll go ahead and stop our Next.js server, start up the Nest.js one, 
And Next.js is actually smart enough to try a different port, which is really great. So now our UI is listening on port 3002 instead. So finally, with our Next.js server running, we should be able to send it a request on localhost 3000. So we have a default get route that's already defined. It's our hello world route that just returns this hello world string. So if we head back to our app, we can see in the back end, we have the app.controller. So we have this one get route we're already defining that's just returning that hello world string from our app service. We're listening on port 3000 here as well in the bootstrap function. So let's go ahead and update our app controller route. So I'm going to go ahead and call this async get users. And this is going to go ahead and return all of our clerk users from our clerk server to the caller. So we're going to be able to do this thanks to the clerk node.js SDK. So I'm going to go ahead and call app service dot get users now. And then in the app service, let's go ahead and use the clerk SDK to get all of our users from our clerk backend. Finally, one last dependency we're going to need to actually read in our clerk authentication details from a .m file is going to be the Nest.js config module. So let's p npm install save at nest.js slash config. So now I want to use the clerk SDK to actually return our users from our clerk backend. Now to do this, we firstly need to actually authenticate with the Clerk SDK. So to do this, we can make, take advantage of the Nest.js config module. So in our app module, let's import the config module. And I'm going to import this config module from at Nest.js slash config. So this is the config module, and then we call for root to go ahead and initialize it. So this is going to read in .env files from our application's root and inject them as environment variables using the .env package underneath the hood. So just like we did in our next JS UI, let's create a .env.local file and we need to provide the clerk secret key again. So I'll copy my clerk secret key from our next JS server and add it to our nest.js servers.env here, the clerk secret key. Nest.js will automatically load this in as an environment variable when our application starts, and that means we can now utilize the clerk SDK. So clerk will automatically create a singleton SDK for us and authenticate with it all automatically. We can simply import clerk client from clerk slash clerk SDK node. And now I'll refactor this function to get users. So this is going to be async since we need to reach out to our clerk server. So we can simply return clerk client dot. And now we can see all of the functionality that the SDK offers us here. We're interested in the dot users. And now dot users, we have a list of users functionality here. So we can create, update users, verify them. We want to call dot get user list to return all of our current users. Now, lastly, I'm going to actually make sure this is named dot env by default, since that's the default file that the dot env library will look for. So this is going to be dot env with our secret key. And importantly, we are get ignoring this by default in nest.js. So we don't commit the secret key. And now if we go back to Postman and launch a request at our server, you can see we get back a array of all of our clerk users. Right now, that's just the one that I've signed in with. So we have all these users being returned back, which is great. We are interacting with our clerk SDK properly. Now what I want to do is actually add authentication to our Nest.js backend using the clerk session token so that we can call our Nest.js backend from our Next.js UI and make sure we have authentication applied. Let's go ahead and get started with this by firstly, in our main.ts, we need to actually parse our incoming cookies into our Nest.js server. 
So we're going to use the cookie parser middleware for that. We can add this middleware by calling app.use and then supply cookie parser from cookie parser. Now make sure we import start as cookie parser. And this is going to pull off the incoming cookies on the request and automatically populate the request.cookies object with it. So now we'll have access to the Next.js session cookie if it's being passed. Let's go ahead and now create a custom auth guard we can use to protect our Next.js routes based off of this session cookie. So I'll create a clerk auth guard in our file project here. So this will be an injectable class export class clerk auth guard and this will implement the can activate interface from nest.js common so this will be async can activate that gets passed in the execution context of the current request so using this execution context we can actually pull off the current request object from our express server where we know the cookies will live now, guards in Nest.js, we have to return a Boolean value from this guard, determining whether or not the user is authenticated. Let's return true at the end here so that we know that the user is authenticated if we haven't returned false beforehand. So what I want to do is I want to check that we have a session cookie being passed, and I want to verify it using the clerk SDK which can actually verify this GWT since it's gonna be the same server that signed the GWT. So like I said, let's firstly get access to the underlying request object by calling context.switchToHttp.getRequest. So now we have the request object. Let's pull off the token. So thanks to a cookie parser, that's gonna be under request.cookies. And now we have the actual cookie we want to pull off that's going to be the underscore underscore session cookie that we've already seen on the UI. So let's check to see if we don't have a token, then we're immediately going to return false, meaning we're not authenticated. Otherwise, we're going to call await clerk client dot verify token and pass in the token. So if this verify token succeeds, we will get back the JWT payload or the decoded JWT. Otherwise, this is going to throw an error here if this token is invalid. So let's actually catch this with a try catch block. If we throw any errors from the token verification, then we're simply going to return false. We can also pass in the token directly into the verified token call and get rid of this extra code here. So lastly, I want to log out any errors that did occur. So I'll add a logger to this guard here using the nest logger class. And now we can log using this logger error. And then I'll go ahead and pass in the error object. So now we're either going to successfully verify our GWT and return true, meaning we're authenticated. Otherwise, we'll return false, meaning we can't access this API anymore. So let's go to our app controller and actually apply this guard by using use guards and pass in the clerk auth guard now. So now if we go back to Postman and try calling this route, we get a 403 because we're not passing in that clerk session cookie and we're not authenticated. So this is great, we're applying authentication properly. Let's go ahead and go to our Next.js UI now and see how we can actually authenticate to this Next.js route. So let's go ahead and firstly call our Next.js backend from the Next.js UI. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new query, which is going to get executed on the server side. So let's go ahead and create a new get users.ts server function. So we'll go ahead and export default async function get users. So this is going to be what our Next.js UI will call to our Next.js server. And now I want to reach out to our Nest.js server to actually get the users. So let's have a const res set it equal to await fetch. I'll pass in our Nest.js server URL now, which is going to be at localhost 3000. And then I'll return res 
dot json which is going to be the parsed response or the parsed users json now i want to go back to our home page and actually call this so since this is a server component we can use top level await and call this server action by calling const all users equal to await get users so let's call this server function and simply log out all of these users so now if we go back to our Next.js UI and refresh, well, if I look at my logs here, you can actually see we have a forbidden 403 being logged. And in our Next.js backend, we actually have an error log stating that we have an invalid JWT. Now this is of course, because we're not providing the clerk JWT cookie to our Next.js backend right now. Let's go ahead and fix this. Go back to our users query and now let's provision some custom headers. In the headers, I now want to explicitly set cookie and call cookies from next slash headers dot to string. So this is going to serialize all of the existing cookies in our Next.js server, which we know is of course going to include the clerk JWT cookie and pass it along to our Next.js backend. So our Next.js backend auth guard can parse the session cookie and authenticate us. If we go ahead and now try refreshing and go back to our logs, we can see we now have this array being returned and this is the array of users, meaning our call has finally succeeded. So we're actually successfully authenticating to our Next.js backend with our clerk JWT cookie. So let's go ahead and output these users in our homepage. I'll create a new div and an h1 where we say all users and now i have an ordered list where i'll map over them so all users dot map and then we get access to a user here so this is actually going to be of type user and we can import this type from cleric next.js server again this is fine because we're on a server component here and then we're going to go ahead and return some jsx so I just want to return a list item that will output the user dot first name and then the user dot last name, just as we've done with our own user and supply a key of user dot ID. So now if we go back to the UI, we can see we have all of the users being outputted here from our Nest.js backend, which is of course using the clerk Node.js SDK to get all of the users. So in this video, we've seen how we can utilize Clerk to set up authentication on both a Next.js app and a Nest.js app super easily. This saves us a lot of time and effort in setting up authentication, especially setting up these social providers, which makes it a lot easier for your users to authenticate while this is all included out of the box thanks to Clerk. I hope you've learned a lot in this lecture. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.